and welcome to the Aircraft Certification Channel. In today's video, Rafaela will talk with Fabio Souza, also known as Cabelo, about how a potential survivable accident turned into a fatal one and how it changed the requirements for fuel system installation. Fabio explains how the requirement created after this accident increase the chance of surviving an accident by preventing the fire post-crash. I'm Clarice Fidel, and together with Rafaela Cayo, we create this space to share experience and connect people that, like us, are passionate by aviation. So if you like aircraft development certification, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be advised every time that we upload a new video. So fasten your seatbelts and enjoy your journey. Hi everyone. Hello, Fabio. Hi. Thanks for being here with us today. And I would like to ask you to introduce yourself so we can start our discussion. First of all, thank, thank you very much for having me. My name is Fabio. You can call me Harry or Cabelo. <laughs> Uh, I've been working as a propulsion developer engineer for 20 years and uh, always involved in a, in a flight test, ground test, rig test and lab test. I also work as a shop floor engineer in a great OEM uh, engine, aircraft engine shop. Thank you very much for having me again and please subscribe the channel and hit the little bell. Okay guys, so this is Fabio, uh, I love him because we have known each other for more than 20 years now and it's, it's really a great um, opportunity to have him here to share his knowledge with us. So today we are going to talk about fuel system crash worthiness, yes, yeah, kind of tough subject, but I'm sure Fabio will, uh, will try to explain it as easy as possible. And uh, if you want to contact Fabio directly, his link will be in the description area. Okay, so let's start. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, Fabi, so uh, we're going to talk about the crash worthiness of the fuel lines. So uh, can you start uh, telling what you're bringing to us today? Yeah, today we are talking about the 25993F, more uh, recognized as a, a, a fuel lines crash worthiness requirement. And uh, it's a very, very important requirement and uh, iconic requirement related to fuel systems. And, and can you tell us what's the importance of this requirement? Okay, uh, at first sight, when you read the intent of the requirement and the requirement itself, it seems and looks very simple. But this requirement is related to a lot of trade-off and analysis conditions regarding crash workings. Okay, so can we take a look at the requirement? Yeah. Section 25993F, fuel system lines and fittings. Each fuel line within the fuselage must be designed and installed to allow a reasonable degree of deformation and stretching without leakage. So it seems like it's a very uh, in, in installation requirement. So uh, regarding to installation, right? Yeah, uh, when, when you read the requirement itself, it looks like a very simple requirement just related to installation and connection and stretching. Okay. But if, if you remember when this requirement was written and uh, why it was written, it's important to consider that the requirement is related directly to aircraft crash landing. Okay, so this, is this requirement related uh, to the crash worthiness requirement? Uh, not only that, it's related to a survivable crash landing. Okay, so can you tell me what a survivable crash landing is? Okay, if you have a, a crash landing situation with the aircraft, a survivable crash landing is a crash that allowed people to survive. Basically, it's like that. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a crash that uh, have the conditions for people to get out of the aircraft after the crash. They, uh, after the crash landing, they will have some time to evacuate the aircraft and maybe save lives. And 
and could you tell me more about the requirement and the history of this requirement? Yeah, uh, in 1965, we have the seven. We have a, a seven two seven flight two two seven accident. Uh, it was a, a, a extreme crash landing, uh, and after the crash, the landing gear, the main landing gear, collapsed and hit the the fuel line, caught fire. Okay, so it caused a fire that prevented people from getting uh, alive from the the aircraft. Yeah, in fact, fifty people. Uh, evacuated from the aircraft, 43 people died, but 50 people, uh, they evacuated, but they burned. They had burned. Okay, so can you tell us what's the understanding behind this requirement? Yeah, the, the main intent of this requirement is prevent fire after the crash landing and allow people or give to the, the, the passengers uh, time to evacuate the aircraft. This is the main intent and you have to focus on that in your uh, fuel installation analysis. And uh, also you have to keep in mind that uh, the fuel lines must support a crash landing above structural limits, uh, aircraft structural limits. Okay, so it's not only the load, structural loads defined by the structural requirements. It's something that's beyond that? Yeah, because if you have a, a hard or extreme crash landing that could uh, lead the aircraft to a fire or destroy the equipment, uh, this, this crash probably uh, will, uh, will be beyond the, the structural limits or aircraft load limits. Uh, so this, uh, can you tell us uh, how this accident affected other requirements as well? Yeah, when, when you look through the accident itself, you see uh, the landing gear, the wiring and the structure. So this is just a few examples how the requirements were affected. But now we are talking directly and straight to the fuel lines. Okay, so we're going to focus on the fuel yeah. lines. And can you explain what are the design precautions that an engineer needs to take to design a fuel system? Okay, when, when you start, when you have a preliminary analysis and your aircraft definitions, the first thing that you, you, you have to recognize is the um, uh, characteristics of your aircraft. If you have a on-wing engines, if you have a fuselage en engines, and define define the, the critical section. Okay, and, and what is the critical section? The critical section in the is the main structure section, likely to collapse in case of extreme uh, um, extreme uh, land landing situation, okay. aircraft extreme landing situation. So as soon as you, you have this, this previous conf aircraft configuration, you can think about uh, uh, your line routing, how to deal with other systems like uh, pressurized area, landing gear bay. So uh, depending on, on your aircraft, you, you have or you can avoid that areas or not. And uh, also, um, your system will concur with other systems like wirings that you, you need to segregate, hydraulic lines, and uh, its structure itself. Because when you have spars, you have to have some distance from spars to avoid guillotine or cut your lines. Okay, so it seems it's very integrated work. And if you're not uh, worried about this in the beginning of the process, you probably need to change your aircraft, Sure, right? sure. Uh, at the beginning of your process and preliminary analysis, you must, you must have to, to have all the teams together, make a lot of zonal analysis and discuss uh, uh, regarding its, uh, uh, each, each uh, um, system limitations. Okay and their requirements, because uh, probably you will concur with other requirements and other limitations inside the aircraft. So the most important thing when you start to work with the fuel lines is the integrate and trade-off discussion. 
Okay, and uh, what about the means of compliance? What are the classic means of compliance for... Well, uh, means of compliance could be analysis or tests and must be discussed as early as possible as the, the, the preliminary analysis with the authorities. As soon as you have the agreement with the authorities, you can propose a means of compliance. That could be analysis or tests or analysis and tests. Okay. So whenever you have a combination, you really need an agreement to define the yeah, limits of each Yeah, and one. the sooner is the better. Okay. You have to talk with the authorities, get your agreement and propose the means of compliance. And do you think they are harmonized? Like uh, FAA, EASA, they usually harmonize with the understanding of this requirement? Uh, sometimes sometimes they, they diverge a little bit okay. regarding some aspects. Uh, for this requirement, I can say um, some authorities could say, oh, uh, this requirement is related to avoid fire, you could not have any leakage. Okay. And some other authorities could say, okay, you could have a leakage, but you need to have some, some distance and segregation from the wiring uh, harness that you give more time to the people uh, uh, be evacuated from the aircraft. Okay. So, dependence of the authority is important to discuss and understand what the authority expects for you. Okay. And the intent and understanding for the means of compliance. Yeah, so it's, in, it's very critical to agree with the authority uh, the, the, the criteria so you can go ahead. At the beginning of the right? program. At the beginning of a program, this is very important because when you have paper, you can do anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, when, when you have a prototype already built, you are advanced a lot in the project. So sometimes it's it's very difficult to change something mm -hmm. regarding the, the other system, and you could affect the other system, other requirements. So as soon as you define with your team and teams mm -hmm. and discuss this. And discuss with authority and, and get the, the, the agreement and propose your means, means of compliance, you can advance in your project. Okay, so uh, really this requirement, uh, when you look at first, it seems like an installation requirement, that, but there's a lot, uh, a lot of discussions beneath it, right? Yeah, it's, uh, when, when you look at the first site, it's, this requirement looks like, a, oh, it's just an installation requirement. I will project a line, a uh, fuel line, and uh, I will put some supportation, some equipment, and that's it. But no, okay. there's a lot of things involved and a lot of things you have to take care and uh, other system involved with this requirement. And, and that's why it's so important to understand the intent of the rule itself so you can figure out all those nuances that comes with the interpretation of the requirement, right? Yeah, and, and you understand that as soon as you talk with the authority, you understand how to deal with their uh, uh, expectations regarding the means of compliance mm -hmm. and the intent of the rule, because this is uh, uh, very, very related to the survival crash landing, as we talked before. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to focus um, in, in your installation and other systems to prevent fire after uh, extreme crash landing. Okay. And uh, can you give us like a final message for the ones that are starting to work with few systems? Okay, guys, uh, start to talk early as possible with your teams in a, in a preliminary design, and I think this discussion will, um, how can I say, will spark in your mind a lot of questions that we can discuss in, in the other, other meetings like that, and uh, I hope you like it. Yeah, and if you have any comments, uh, and if you have the experience of doing it differently, let us know in the comments section. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and have a great journey. Thanks. Thank you.